After this video, you're going to learn some of the great passive care ways to reduce some symptoms of ulnar nerve conditions. Obviously, if you have an ulnar nerve condition, it'd be great to be checked out by a doctor first. See the disclaimer. Now, if you have an ulnar nerve entrapment, one of the most important things is really to realize where it's coming from. Now, as you see here, the ulnar nerve can be entrapped in many different spots. One is in the neck, one is in the shoulder or in the brachial plexus region, one is in the elbow, one is in the wrist. There's actually a lot of evidence to show that actually if it's entrapped in one spot, it's entrapped in many. So a lot of times all we really need to do is get this, to ner this nerve to slide a little bit. But sometimes finding the exact area of the sticking point is a little bit tricky. I know people are looking for a single exact exercise stretch or some type of nerve flossing to actually improve their ner ulnar nerve condition, but there's not one. That is the thing. It takes a little bit of investigation. Now in the article I talked about passive care, which is amazing. I love passive care. Everyone loves passive care. Passive care is your stretching, your massaging, the things that people do to you, not necessarily things that take some effort by yourself. Passive care is amazing because it can reduce symptoms of hand numbness very quickly if you find and do it in the right spot. But as we know that there's probably a reason why that area became stuck and sticking in the first place. So similar to this rubber band presentation, unless you keep that thing elevated by some type of effort of the rest of the body, oftentimes it will stick down again, creating symptoms again, and make, making you very frustrated that this thing will not just stay away. Active care is really the second part, and it reduces the amount of frequency of the re-sticking from occurring. So I know a lot of people's conditions, their hand numbness, they're, they're afraid of doing certain things like picking up objects and going for runs and holding babies. They're afraid of doing this stuff because they're worried it's gonna come back. Now, what if I told you you can actually decrease the potential of it coming back by strengthening and positioning your body in a opportunistic way and getting your body to actually do the unsticking all the time? Well, that's basically what active care does. It helps reduce the amount of friction between the nerve and the surrounding areas where it's getting stuck. Now, active care comes in many forms just like passive care does. Active care can be very something very simple and basic, kind of like a very easy rehab exercise where you barely break a sweat. Other things like, say, a farmer's carry can improve stabilization of the shoulder, which reduces pinch points of that nerve in the shoulder, which then supports the area. But it can be really freaky when doing it because it seems like a lot of weight. and It's scary. I get it. I've been there. Now, if you're worried about some of these rehab exercises and they're really not doing well with you, that's, a, that's completely merited. And a proper examination will actually get you to the point where you can figure out your risk reward on a lot of these things. And I do that with every person I see. Uh, and we figure out, can I, can I load them heavy? Can I have them carry something? Am I gonna make them worse by doing some of these things? Because it's not always proper to do those things at a certain time in someone's recovery. Now, I'm not going to touch on active care anymore. We'll go back into passive care for the remainder of this video. But if you're looking for more information on it, just check out the link I provided. I created an entire manual on this thing. You won't be disappointed. Check it out. You're going to love it. Now, let's take a look at my five favorite passive ulnar nerve treatments can, that can reduce hand numbness in people very quickly, case dependent. Now, my very favorite one is actually to reduce the amount of sticking points that you have in, in the neck where the nerves exit. Now this would actually technically, technically be called a radiculopathy and we can reduce the amount of sticking point it has there in the spine by focusing on the area surrounding it such as the mid back. Now one of the simplest ways is to use a foam roller and not necessarily roll up and down the back but more so melt cheese. Think of it kind of like you're just hanging there and it takes two minutes to really melt into the foam roller. Imagine the foam roller is hot and you're moving into different sections of the cheese and you're starting to melt that section. It might take a minute to melt that section. Explore different regions and you might find out this actually reduces and offloads the nerves within the neck. Now my second favorite is to do some myofascial release and just chilling down the muscles up in this area, the upper trap, the levator scapula. These muscles tend to dominate movements in people who have hand numbness in this distribution. Now, one of the ways, the simplest ways to do it is just take your opposite side hand and you grab the muscle just with the pads of the fingers, just right there, you just kind of grab it right there, and then you push it downward. Now just holding it firm, think of there's an area, there's the muscles right here that are gonna pass by. So when I start moving my neck to the side, you can feel those muscles just gently moving underneath the hand contact. And you can kind of move around to different spots. I don't suggest you go up into this region right here because this actually is where the brachial plexus comes through, and sometimes it can heat things up on people. But this is a real simple way. Also, you can take this arm and just kind of reach down towards the floor 
and you're going to feel the sh whole shoulder just depress, which helps release those muscles. And oftentimes, this can reduce symptoms on people. It's pretty amazing. Now, my third favorite one is actually to reduce the friction points of the entire track. Because sometimes, again, you can have multiple sticking points like I showed on that rope. Now, the easiest thing to do is just lift the skin. And think about the muscles right here. See my skin? Imagine that's the muscles. Imagine there is a nerve passing through right here and the skin layer is just kind of pressing down on it because the nerve is a, is a complete bundle. It kind of gets pissed off when it has the whole nerve irritated because it can be stuck in one point and the whole nerve gets pissed and that's why the hand gets affected. So oftentimes you just lift the skin right there and you let the nerve slide a little bit and start pulling it through. So the, the nerves right here, you can start right here within this area and just start moving the fingers just like that. Okay, lift the skin, move the fingers. Okay, and you can move down a little bit in, into the armpit right here. Lift the skin right there. You'll feel these little cords in there. Lift the skin, and we're going to move the fingers now. We're going to go this way. Okay, pinky back, act like you're waiting a table. If this is my phone, was the tray. We're just going to wait the table just like that. Okay, just hold it and let the fingers do the work. Simple. You can also hold it and let the head do the work too. All good. Okay, move down a little bit, same movement. Okay, let the fingers do the work. If you really want to get fancy, we're going to start with the iPhone down and go the iPhone up and lift the elbow. It's all good. You can track it all the way down into here. When you start getting into here, it might be useful to move the head a little bit. Okay, as a general rule, when you have movements of certain areas, you want to produce, if both areas are moving, then they don't separate, but if one area is moving, then it will separate. So that's an aspect of neurodynamics, uh, also plucking and yapping. Let me give credit where credit's due. There will be a link in the description below, but that's one of my absolute favorite. My next favorite is taping at the cubital tunnel because sometimes we find the entrapment is actually within the wrist area and sometimes just lifting the skin there consistently really helps. And an easy tape job like this can do so. This is a really short snippet of that, but if you're interested in this video, there'll be a link to that video as well. It's a full length, about a four or five minute video. Lastly, just simple stretching of the elbow region is nice and important. And yes, there's a lot of things that will happen from this, but don't think about that. Just simply go through movements. The body loves movements, nerves love movement. So what this is gonna look like is we're just gonna take the pads of the fingers right here and we're gonna push the pads through just like that and then turn a little bit. So it's gonna be pushing and turning, okay? And then you just kinda hold it just like that, all right? And go again, and go again, and go again. Give about five or so. The next one, make a fist, grab with the other hand, and you're going to be turning this. Like you want to show your tricep to the world because you got a badass tricep, okay? Grab it and turn it. You should start feeling this area start to, to tension a little bit, okay? Give about five there. The last one is just that iPhone one like we did, okay? You can do it without the iPhone, but it's gonna go here, grab the fingers, go up, okay? These all produce different things, but overall, it's very common for people with nerve-based conditions and uh, musculoskeletal muscle conditions just to freeze and be, be afraid, and that's really not what you wanna do long-term. Sure, in the beginning, it might be the right thing to do, but usually there's phases of care with people and at some point, movement is medicine and motion is lotion. That's all I'm trying to show you with this. But when you start getting into the more important stuff later, you have to start loading the air. You have to subject it slowly to things it's going to encounter throughout the day. Sometimes people are very afraid of lifting a weight. And I've had that in, in clinic here where people are like, I don't want to lift that 20 pound weight. And I'm like, look, a bag of groceries, which you'll, you'll carry two in a hand and put uh, maybe a water bottle underneath the other one, you'll start walking up flights of stairs to get to your condo. This happens, but you have to subject it slowly and oftentimes getting too much exposure too soon on these things is what triggers it. We just have to start using our rehab and our exercise as ways to expose our body to things we're going to be expected to do throughout our day. Now lastly, on a very serious note, I know a lot of you watching YouTube videos and reading articles, you're looking for uh, only self-help, but realistically, some of the early things, early, early changes that happen with numbness of the hand are not a big deal. Uh, sometimes people go and they fall asleep, they wake up with it, they shake their hand out and it goes away. That's all cool and great. 
all right? But when it starts to become long lasting and it starts to last for weeks and months at a time, it's a big problem. Literally the nerve will start to uh, erode away from, from the distal end this way. And it takes a long time for it to grow back. So the results later in those advanced cases, they're really tough to get back. So although it might not seem like a big deal because it doesn't really hurt, and it's easy for people to ignore numbness, changes the sensation because it doesn't hurt. People are very motivated by pain, but numbness, not all, not, they're not always. But realistically, nerve changes are way more serious than muscle changes. If you tore a muscle, it's probably gonna repair real quick. Bones repair real quick, all right? They're very vascular, they really do their thing well. Nerves though, you gotta hang on, you gotta get those things done really quickly, okay? So take it serious. Do not discount this thing, get checked out. Now if you guys are really interested in learning everything there possibly is to know about rehabbing and recovering from the ulnar nerve, I wrote it all in the book, okay? I understand there's a lot of information on the internet, there's lots of articles, lots of videos, lots of people telling you that this, this, and that is out there and it's hard to fit it all together, okay? I don't expect you guys to really know it all of it and I don't expect you to put it all together. So I did it for you, okay? I did this because I get a lot of email requests about this and this and that and asking what to do and where they should go and all. I, did, I put it all in there, okay? So I want you guys to buy it. I want you guys to buy it for yourself, okay? I don't make a living on these books. I want you to buy it because the information that you're gonna wanna know is in there. The book is called The Secrets to Hand Numbness, The Definitive Manual to Ulnar Nerve Recovery. All right, I've spent a year writing this thing. Please get it, share it with your loved one who might have numbness in the hand. They're gonna thank you for it. And if you guys wanna read the rest of the article, the, the link will be in the description below, or if you're watching on the page, just read it through. Talk to you guys soon.